If you've been following this channel for a long while, you know I have a big history with Tetrazoles and we had quite a large series, probably my largest series, where I made Tetrazole from scratch. That is from urea. We basically took the nitrogens from urea and we formed the Tetrazole ring that way. I'm pretty much completely out of Tetrazole, so we need to go back and look at our precursors and see where along the line we can begin the process again of making some more Tetrazole. Now, I don't have a whole lot of ammonium bicarbonate, so that's, um, you know, the one chemical that we then turn into Tetrazole. So this is one step back. That's only like a gram or two in there that's really not heaps this is some older stuff it looks really crappy 2015 yeah god that's more than four years old and this one is more than two years old so not great so then we go back another step and what we need to use is hydrazine sulfate i have not very much hydrazine sulfate a little bit i used to make heaps of this and the other chemical we need on that step is cyanamide now i have all of these cyanamides that i've made at some point but unfortunately I tried to test these for the actual presence of cyanamide and I do that by adding silver to cyanamide in nitric acid and then it'll precipitate silver cyanamide which is bright yellow one of the few times we're actually looking for a positive yellow I don't get a single bit from any of them <laughs> so I think these are all so old this is the most recent one was over two years ago and these ones are, are, are even older that over time the oxygen from the air just destroys them so these have no cyanamide in them at all so these are of no use to me we can't even go back to this step so we'd have to go back to even to the previous step and I don't think I have any of that so we're actually going all the way back to urea but that's a whole heap of work that's a lot a lot of work so I'm pretty disappointed that I can't make tetrazoles here from any step along the way we're, we're back to square one basically which is weeks of work that's a bit of a shame but I do have a solution this here is a hundred grams of amino guanidine bicarbonate <laughs> I just bought it online it wasn't cheap, but here we go. Here's a pure chemical. This is a lifetime supply of tetrazole, really. We can turn this into so much tetrazole, more than I, I could really use in energetics. So yes, I got this from Australian Supply. They don't really want me to say who they are, which is fair enough, but it wasn't heaps cheap, and they're not sponsoring this video, but that's fine, they're, they're cool. Um, but I've got it, bloody go ahead and do it. Whoa! Oh, I did the thing! Holy shit! Look at that! Oh, that's fucking sick as!
All right, so this is the five amino tetrazole. We expect a little bit of residue here, but not too much. Still a bit wet, it seems, but looks all good. Tiny bit of residue. All right, for our next step, we need to make five nitro tetrazole. And I'm not gonna go into great detail here because we are doing something stupendously dangerous and we're making compound, whoa, don't blow, don't blow. We're making something very dangerous. I'm, I'm not worried about, oh, quote unquote, terrorists, you know, using this information as most people assume. It's kind of like, I know there are some of you in the amateur chemistry community who like to do some things that I do. And I just worry that if I really demonstrate this one out, you, you might follow it and, and it is potentially very dangerous because we're making a very powerful explosive at the end of this and there's no way to get around that. However, the reaction is still very, very interesting. What we have here is our amino tetrazole and we're gonna be adding it to this plastic cup here, which is, oh, this wind, stop. Okay, I'm gonna add this to the cup now before it blows away. It seems like a lot of stuff, but it's very, uh, it's very fluffy, so it's not a whole lot of material. This solution is a sulfuric acid solution. It's acidic uh, and it has our amino tetrazole in it. And this here is a sodium nitrite solution. Now what we're doing is a diazination, but we're doing a diazination kind of badly. What we're doing is this whole thing is gonna be about 65 degrees, if I can hit the temperature correctly. I might just crank it up, heat it a little bit. 65 degrees, this temperature, the side reaction of the diazination where we generate loss of nitrogen dioxide and we oxidize our material is going to take over and that's generally very very bad in a normal diazination but in this case what we're doing is we're actually going to use that oxidation to oxidize the amine group to a nitro group directly it's a bit of a weird reaction there was a, a weirder way of making this five nitro tetrazole that was considered the only way of making it a couple of years ago let's say previous to 2015 and that involved going by a, a copper nitrotetrazole and then you displace the copper into copper oxide and so you had to make cunts and it was a cunt of a method honestly because one step where you made an intermediate that exploded if it was more than one percent in the solution so you were dripping stuff in and it was having all this micro detonations as it was stirring i never did it but it looked tremendously scary anyway a patent was published the amateur chemistry community found it and it just said hey if you just do this it works fast and loose it'll be fine very surprising but hey here we are We'll add this slowly dropwise to this. Okay, very uh, rapid update. It's out of control. Look at that. It's spoiling and the temperature keeps rising. It's out of the water bath. Okay, so I'm going to go do something about this. Thanks for the update. Thanks for tuning in. All right, I got it back under control. I just put it in some normal water and that cooled it down. That didn't happen before. I've done this reaction once before and it didn't do that. That was a little bit unpleasant. We'll try and to avoid that happening again. So here's our product. It's a lot more yellow than I wanted, and yellow chemistry is bad. If it's gone yellow, it's not very good. Probably deserves a recrisp. I will recrisp it, but I think now we have to do the all important burn test because what we're looking for is it should melt and then explode quite violently. So if it doesn't do that, we, we have issues, but it should do that. I, I'm fairly confident. Oh no. Oh no. So I looked back through the footage and I compared what I did with what I should have actually been doing and I worked out why I fucked it up. And it's because, and this is such a rookie error and this is just completely on my own fault. You have to add this solution, which is a tetrazole solution to the nitrite solution. I added the nitrite solution to the tetrazole solution, which explains why we had a runaway reaction. It probably turned all our product into nitrogen and then all the crystals we got at the end of sodium sulfate. I hate it when sodium sulfate crystallizes out at the end of the reaction. I always think it's the end product. So we're doing it again, but we're doing it right this time. And also the other change I'm making is I'm moving over to nitric acid because I have quite a bit of nitric acid. That's not a flex, so it's just a point. And sodium nitrate is a lot more soluble than sodium sulfate. So it doesn't tend to crystallize out of the reaction mix at the end. So we can boil down our solution to get our sodium nitrate tetrazole crystals out and they're not gonna be as contaminated or be 100% sodium sulfate. So nitric is better for this. I mean, perchlorate is even better but who has spare perchlorate lying around? Probably me. 
I have some lying around somewhere. Anyway, we're using nitrix. I've got only two and a half grams of five amino tetrazole. My confidence has taken a hit here and we'll do the whole thing again. Let's go. Right, so here's our final product. I had a tough time filtering it because there's a lot of crystals to solution. The solution was very thick so it didn't get drawn off the crystals very easily. This product of course is triggering your yellow sensors. It deserves a recrease, but we're just gonna do a heat test first. It may not be our product. So once again, we're waiting to see if it melts and explodes. And if it is, then we'll um, give this the recrease it deserves. And if it doesn't do that, we'll just throw it in the bin and have a cry, I think. Yes! Okay, and here's our final yield. I, well, I mean, it's not quite our final yield. The recrist is being particularly difficult for some reason. At room temperature, there's no crystals. And then when I put it back in the freezer, it solidifies out. This is somewhere in between. Recrystalling from water is probably not the most ideal situation. I'll get it done. It's just, I don't have any time for the next two weeks to finish it off. I'm out of gloves. The lab's a mess. This video's already taken three weeks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. I've got to buy more gloves. Remember this.